Hi everyone, welcome to today's numeracy video. Today we'll be focusing on how to work with decimal numbers. So what is a decimal number? When we're talking about decimals, we're talking about a number that is in between whole numbers. It's similar to a fraction or a percentage in that it shows a value that is part of a whole. When we look at a decimal number, we can see that the whole number is written first, if there is one, sometimes decimal numbers are less than one, and that number is followed by a dot, which is also called a point, and then the number or numbers that represent the partial value. For example, if someone had three and a half apples, the decimal would be 3.5. This is because 0.5 is the same as 50%, or halfway between two numbers. Similarly, if someone had one and a quarter pies, the decimal number would be 1.25. 0.25 is the same as 25%, or a quarter of the way to the next whole number. Now let's take a look at how to turn a fraction into a decimal. To do this, we divide the top number of the fraction by the bottom number. If you have a mixed number, which is a number with a whole number and a fraction, the whole number stays the same, then the decimal gets placed after. For example, if we have 1 half, we would do 1 divided by 2, which equals 0 0.5. So this is why the person who had 3 and a half apples in the previous example could also be said to have 3.5 apples. For another example, when we have 1 quarter, we can do 1 divided by 4 to get 0 0.25. This explains why the person who had 1 and a quarter pies in the previous example could also be said to have 1.25 pies. Next we're going to see how we can turn percentages into decimals. One easy way to do this is to divide the percentage by 100. So 50% would be 50 divided by 100, which equals 0 0.5. And 25% is 25 divided by 100, which equals 0 0.25. You can do the same thing for percentages that are over 100%. This will just give you a decimal that has a whole number first. So 350% would be 350 divided by 100, which equals 3.5. And 125% would be 125 divided by 100, which equals 1.25. Okay, let's look at place values in decimals, which are the positions that the numbers are in. Whole numbers go up by ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, and so on, starting at the decimal point and going left. Decimals also have their own place values. They're called tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, and so on, starting at the decimal and going right. Note that the decimal places start at tenths and there is no once. Sometimes you'll have to round decimals off to a certain place value, especially if they go on for a long time, or even infinitely. There are some steps that you can follow to round off numbers. First, you'll find the number in the place value that you're rounding off to. Then look at the number to the right of that number and determine if it's either between 0 to 4 or 5 to 9. If that neighboring number is between 0 and 4, that means the number to its left, the one in the place value you're rounding to, will stay the same. Or if that number is between 5 and 9, the number to its left will go up by 1. Once you figure this out, round the number in the place value that you're rounding off to, which means it'll either stay the same or go up 1. Then get rid of all the numbers after that place value. Let's do some examples now. Here it says to round 3.14159, 
to the nearest hundredth. So step one would be to find the number in the hundredths place. In this case, it's four. Step two is to look at the number to the right of the four and determine if it's either between zero to four or five to nine. That number is one, which is between zero and four. So that means when we round, the number in the hundreds place is going to stay the same. Finally, we round that number four, though in this case it will just stay the same, and then get rid of all the numbers after that four. You're left with the rounded off number 3.14. Let's do one more example. This one tells us to round 26.783542 to the nearest tenth. So we find the number in the tenths place, which is the seven. We then look at the number to its right and see if it's between zero and four or five and nine. The number is eight, so that means it's between five and nine and we'll make the number in the tenths position go up by one. So we can then change that seven in the tenths place to an eight and get rid of all the numbers after it. In the end, we have the rounded off number 26.8. Decimals are especially important for working with money. If you haven't yet, I'd recommend you also check out our video about Canadian money to familiarize yourself with different coins and bills. Money is represented in dollars and cents. The dollars are the whole numbers, which are to the left of the decimal point. The cents are parts of a whole dollar, which are to the right of the decimal point. Remember that money always has exactly two numbers after the decimal point, and money always starts with a dollar sign. Let's do some examples with money. The number shown at the top here is read as $100.05. It's really important to remember that there is a zero in the tenths place to make it five cents and not 50 cents. You can see that 100.05 is not the same as 100.5. But 100.5 is shown as 100.50 when dealing with money because there's always two numbers after the decimal. We add a zero after if there's only one number after the decimal. Now what happens if there's more than two numbers after the decimal when working with money? In this case, rounding would come in and you would have to round off to two decimal places. So 100.5523 would be rounded to 100.55 or $100.55 and 100.558 would be rounded to 100.56, or $100.56. Another thing to keep in mind when dealing with money in Canada is that we no longer use the penny, or one cent coin. Instead, all money values get rounded off so that the value of the cents either ends in five or zero. This is important for when you're paying for items and giving change, especially if the cash register doesn't automatically display it like this. Let's now take a look at how we round cents to make up for the lack of penny. When the last number is a one or two, round the number down to zero. So a dollar twelve rounds down to a dollar ten. When the last number is a three or four, round the number up to five. A dollar and 13 cents rounds up to a dollar 15. When the last number is a six or a seven, round down to five. So a dollar 27 rounds down to a dollar 25. And when the last number is an eight or a nine, round up to zero. So one dollar and 28 cents would round up to one dollar and 30 cents. And that covers our introduction to working with decimals. I encourage you to continue practicing rounding decimals, working with money, and even mental math adding and subtracting decimals to sharpen your numeracy skills.
Thanks for joining me today, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.